for our next, next bit of the program, we'd like to share a bit of history about the Women's Intercultural Network. WIN was incorporated in 1995 as a 501c3 and has UN consultative status. It was born out of the, world, the first World Conference on Women, which was held in Mexico City in 1975. And it was named by a group of women at the conference in Idaho. Marilyn Fowler was one of those, and she brought back the, the infant win to California and where it put down roots in San Francisco. Uh, in 1995, Wynn was involved at the fourth World Conference on Women, known as the Beijing Conference, where 40,000 women and girls joined together from 189 countries and agreed on the platform for action, a progressive document that was imperative to advancing the state. Wynn's mission is to ensure that all women and girls' voices are heard in all forums give their full participation in their government's economies. Um, and since Wynn called for circles to be formed, ten of those have formed for Afghanistan, China, France, Iraq, Iran, Ireland, Japan, Latin America, the Philippines, and Uganda. Uh, Wynn also has partners in ten other countries. And we're very fortunate today, one of Wynn's board members has flown in from Northern California to be with us, and that's Mr. Robin Hendress, who's the president of Wynn. And so I would like to uh, invite her to join us up here at the podium. Um, please join me in welcoming uh, Ms. Robin Hendricks. Hey, thank you so much for having me today. Um, as Philip said, I just flew in from San Francisco, and then after that, I'm going to go fly back. So I'm just here for a few hours, but I'm really thrilled to be here. Um, and I want to say that um, there's many other WIN board members who would have loved to have been here today to celebrate Women's Equality Day with you all. Um, so I'm representing the entire board when I say how thrilled we are to be a part of IC WIN's Equality Day celebration today. So as Philip gave, uh, gave us the introduction about, and as many of you know, Marilyn Fowler, the founder of the Women's Intercultural Network, fell ill last year and is no longer able to lead WIN, unfortunately. Before last year, Marilyn was an incredible force for decades in the global grassroots movement to fight for equality for women and girls, for full participation in our governments and in our economies. So today I want to talk about the lessons that Marilyn taught us. And I want to do this by talking about how Marilyn's work reflected her vision for a true women's intercultural network. One that would link women and girls across nations, cultures, and digital platforms. Her concept was that WIN was not an organization that networks, but a network that organizes. This distinction shows you the inclusivity that is hardwired into WIN's approach and mission, a mission that ensures that all women and girls' voices are heard throughout digital and physical spaces. She believed that it's essential for us to meet women and girls where they're at, not only geographically, but on the path of grassroots organizing. Since 1998, WIN has been an NGO with special consultative status to the UN Economic Social Council, a significant policy-making body to the United Nations. With that status, WIN accredits official delegates to United Nations meetings and participates annually in the UN Commission on the Status of Women. WIN is excited to support IC WIN's project, which brings young women from IC WIN to the United Nations in New York every year. Each year, the UN Commission on the Status of Women focuses on a theme for each of us NGOs to report on. And each year, Marilyn made sure WIN's contribution was inclusive of the women and girls most affected by the focus issue. For the CSW 62, the priority theme was rural women and girls. Marilyn was true to her vision of being a network that organizes and meeting girls where they were at. So Wynne went to rural California to meet rural women in their communities. We held a call to action in the Central Valley with women and girls. We heard from indigenous women, migrant farm workers, about their substandard working conditions, polluted air and water, 
We heard from Latina high school girls about the racism and sexism that they experienced while trying to study and attend class. We heard from women organizers about the corrupt police and justice system which oppresses immigrants. Marilyn invited the women and girls we met in, Central, in the Central Valley to be part of WIN's delegation to the United Nations to tell their realities during our panel presentation. Even though the priority theme that year was rural women and girls, WIN's panel was one of the only panels at the UN CSW that year where women and girls uh, from rural communities actually spoke. Our panel was powerful and moving because we not only presented data, we brought rural women to the global table. Now, I want to back up until 1995, almost 25 years ago. Wynn sent a diverse delegation to Beijing to participate in the Fourth World Conference on Women. An unprecedented 17,000 participants and 30,000 activists came from all around the world to develop a global commitment to gender equality and women and girls empowerment. Wynn partnered with Apple Computer and linked them with women leaders and created a women's cyber conference. So Wynn brought the Beijing conference in 1995, all the outcomes from that conference to women around the world and connected them with each other. Again, Wynn, with Marilyn's vision, met women where they were at and through technology included their voices in a global forum. The conference lasted two weeks. There were muddy pathways between the venues, there was not enough hotel rooms for all the attendees, and there was a lot of disorganization and chaos. However, despite all this, the attendees produced the Beijing uh, Declaration and Platform for Action, the most progressive blueprint ever for advancing women's rights. It produced a template uh, for 12 critical areas of focus, from women and poverty, to women and violence, to women and education. It also declared the importance of the rights of girls and their foundational experiences as children as they develop into women. Wynn took these critical areas outlined in the Beijing Platform for Action and applied them to California, creating CAWA, the California Women's Agenda. This was the first policy mechanism to implement the Beijing Platform for Action at a local grassroots level. And I want to mention that uh, one of IC Wynn's leaders, Alahe Amane, was one of the founding leaders of this effort. Employing the Beijing Platform for Action Framework globally, Wynn reached out with an initiative named Calling the Circle of Women from the U.S. and beyond, demanding full participation in our governments and economies. Through the Calling Circle, Maryland connected women from all over the world, including Afghanistan, Uganda, and Japan. Through these circles, Alahe Amani emerged again as a leader, and Marilyn designated her the chair of the global cities, or I'm sorry, the global circles. Then, at Wynn's 20th anniversary, IC Wynn was founded to bring together women from all sides of the Iranian diaspora. 25 women attended from Southern and Northern California to support IC Wynn at that event. So here we are today celebrating the fourth year of IC Win on Women's Equality Day. Marilyn's vision is a lesson for all of us moving forward. I want to encourage all of you and all of you from IC Win to instill this vision in your work. As you organize, network, and speak out for gender equality and the rights of all women and girls, meet women and girls where they're at organize a robust network, and build both digital and physical spaces where women and girls can speak out. Thank you very much. Next, it's my honor to, to start our award ceremony. Um, we are honored to introduce the 2019 Women's Equality Day, Equality Day awardee, 
We are honored to introduce Mr. Reza Goharzad. Mr. Goharzad is a journalist, political commentator, and editor best known as the host of the Farsi language political and news show, Politics and Society, at KRN Radio, and the Chali Shampuyesh on Andi She Television. Sorry, my Farsi is not very good. <laughs> uh, his interest in gender equality goes back to his involvement in equality building and anti-violence movements. He has dedicated his magazine to focus on issues of domestic violence, and along with some of his friends, he created a hundred men against domestic violence group. He has been the connection between the Iranian community and the United States political scene, covering current events, presidential conventions, and elections on radio and television. Mr. Goharzar continues to edit books, and since immigrating to the United States to date, has edited dozens of books in a wide range of topics, such as four volumes about the Holocaust and other, genera uh, other genocides from 1915 to 2015, written by uh, Mr. Barak Kania, which has earned, US, U, has earned the U.S. Librarian's Award. Beyond journalism, Mr. Goharzad is an active member of several charities, a human rights activist, and an advocate of secular democracy. He has been an ally, a supporter, and an activist on issues of women's rights, particularly the issues of women and girls. We honor him for his effort in promoting gender equality. Let's give a warm welcome to Mr. Ladies and gentlemen, before I begin, please allow me to extend my immense gratitude and appreciation to Wayne and ICV for this event and for the bestowing this honor to me. It's true humbling time and moment for me to receive this honor in celebration of the Women's Equality Day and 100th anniversary of the women's right to vote. It saddens me that I'm speaking to you at a time where countless women, including human rights activists, lawyers, and journalists, are being jailed or otherwise repressed for their valiant and brave efforts towards the progress of the women's equality in Iran and many other countries. My efforts are too small in comparison to spoken of in the same sentence as this woman and this brave girls, woman, and other activists. So I dedicate this award to them. For me, Living in the United States is a bold privilege and responsibility. As someone who enjoys the country's freedom, I must carry a responsibility and will always carry a responsibility to take every opportunity we have, big or small, to not just speak against injustice or inequality, but to be the force that acts when others are too oppressed to do so. As a journalist, I only have my voice, and it's my duty to use this voice for others whose voice have been muted by oppression, silence, is not an option for us. How can we silence when three women for singing and gifting flowers 
in celebration of the Women's Day, they received 53 years of prison. You saw the history. I'm not going to repeat the history. But since 1906, Iran's Constitution Revolution, till 1963, any time it was movement and women, they want to get their voting right. The only people that they stopped it was clergy. Those clergy, those Ayatollahs, those people that they are messenger of the God. It has been the honor of my lifetime to have the opportunity to be a man who fights for the equality of the woman. All men must stand with women as they if they terms of their own equality. It is not for men to decide what equality looks for women or how it will be, but it is responsibility of the all men to stand for them and fight alongside with them. Fifty years ago, when I walked into the Institute for Intellectual Development of the Children and Young Adults, as a young adult myself, before I ever worked there, I was mentored by a woman who shaped my worldview. The most important of each being my view towards the woman. They were not my mother, or aunts, or grandmothers. And yet, they took this responsibility to teach me voluntarily and consider it as a high importance and for me, that's why I will be forever grateful for them. It was they who taught me to stand with women and it was with them and for them that I attended the protest, March 8, 1979. I protested alongside my colleagues and my end friend, and now my beloved wife, against mandatory hijab in Iran. I believe that if that time all the men had joined the women in the street and protested, we would not have the woman in prison for hijab now. Since that time, I have lived as a person who always lives life with an eye open for the what will be the next opportunity. Sometimes, I only have the ability to speak out against mass injustice. And my voice may not have an immediate effect of the course on its own. Sometimes I have ability to help one specific life and do a part of the heavy chain life lift sometimes and a small burden. Each of us has a resource to use towards the fight. For me, as a journalist, with access to newspapers, radio, and television, my resource was my voice and my ability to raise awareness to the women's issue. Your resource may be different, your reach may be bigger or smaller, but your power is just as important. You must do something, anything, but you do something. Beside my ability to raise awareness, I also have sought professional relationship 
and friendship with other men who will join me in these efforts and understanding the importance of the men as the allies in this fight. Men must be allies to this fight, but they must also remember that this space belongs to women. Men should not speak for women or instruct women on how to fight for this fight. Yeah. Men must reform themselves in how they speak to the woman. And more importantly, when they speak about women, when there are no women there to hear them, they know they have to reform them. More importantly, men must practice humility and use their unearned privilege to hold up the platform on which women stand, not lead it, this is what a good ally does. Also, equality begins at home. First, in the words of the great Supreme Court Justice, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, women will only have true equality when men share with them the responsibility of bringing up the next generation. For me, that was the first and most important step to support the women in my own family as they live on their own terms. I want to conclude my talk and thanking all of you one time. Each of you for your commitment and efforts towards equality. And last but not least, I would like to thank my wife and my two daughters who motivate me and most importantly have taught me how to be a better feminist, how to be a better man, and how to be a better human being. Thank you. Still have the kiss as we ran away.